all over the world use the UN human rights system to advocate for better protection of their rights when their own governments fail to do so. There are a whole range of ways activists or ordinary people might come into contact with the UN human rights system, whether it's reporting on a country's implementation of international legal obligations, being interviewed by a fact-finding mission, submitting a complaint about ill treatment, or even lobbying other countries in the corridors and meeting rooms of the UN to push their own country to shape up. But what happens when a country's reaction is to intimidate, threaten, or attack those people in response, as has actually been the case in recent months in countries from Sri Lanka to Bahrain? Sadly, this is a reality for far too many, and the response so far from countries and from the UN has been far from adequate. The good news is that momentum to do more, to push countries to prevent this kind of retaliation, and to address it head on when it does occur, is building. We at ISHR are really pleased that the issue is front and center on the agenda of the UN's top human rights policy making body, the UN Human Rights Council, this September. This ISHR report aims to contribute to those debates by addressing why states need badly to pass legislation protecting the right of everyone to use the UN to claim their rights safely and unhindered by threats of retaliation. Passing such laws is crucial to providing a solid legal basis in national law for the right to cooperate unhindered with the UN. It's also really crucial to underlining the importance and legitimacy of that work and to signaling the kind of support from public authorities that in turn builds wider, crucial societal awareness and support. The report finds that in several parts of the world, countries are making some really promising efforts in that direction. However, the report also clearly demonstrates that some countries have missed opportunities to clarify and provide needed protection. The hope is that through our analysis of these good practices and of the gaps, that we can shed some light on how all countries can do better on this count. With that in mind, we're working hard now and will continue to do so at the Council in the coming weeks, pushing for a strong call to action by all states to bring their legislation in, in line so as to ensure everyone who comes into contact with the UN can do so safely, freely, 